Hello, Pouring Nation. Today, I hope to save you guys some time. Um, as an acrylic pour artist, one of the problems that I've had in the past is I haven't been able to paint as much as I wanted to. So, the solution to that is to make your own pouring tray. I made this uh, in about half an hour, and the reason why this is so helpful is, again, one of the problems that we have is it takes a while to prep a surface to be able to do a pour. You got to make sure you have plastic down or paper down or a lowly beefy mat like I have um, so that the paint has a place to land and then potentially dry. And then you're making a lot of waste when you do that, you know, plastic bag, paper, whatever the case may be, you're throwing that away. Sometimes it's hard to clean up. A um, DIY paint container like this allows you to paint. Let the drips go into the bottom of the container. You can pull the painting off, put it somewhere else to dry, and then do another painting. Do the same thing. So really you're only limited by how much um, surface you have for paints to dry. Um, another reason why I like this is you can still get skins. When the paint drips to the bottom, you let it dry and it peels right up, just like it does from the silicone mats. Again, less waste, save yourself some time, have a different place to pour and to dry, and that allows you to do more paintings. And I'd just like to take a few minutes today to show you guys how I built this one, talk to you about some alternatives that you could do, and hopefully save you guys some time and allow you to paint more. So let's get to it. All right, so here's my container. Um, this container took me about 30 minutes to create. It could be a little bit less, depending on the utensils that you use, but first, let me talk about the container that I chose. I got this at Walmart, and I chose this particular container because I wanted to fit a 16 by 20 canvas inside of the container. And in order to do that, I needed a container that would allow me to have 16 inches, well, really 18 to 20 inches of space. And this was one of the only ones I could find. Uh, it's about eight inches deep. It's 19 and a half inches wide and 36, I think, inches long. So that lets me have a uh, 16 by 20 canvas inside of the sides here. So I'll put a link to this one down below. Honestly, any container will work as long as it is flat. Um, there are some containers that I've bought before. Um, I don't have the one here, but I bought some containers that are kind of, uh, they're, not, they're not level. So that really doesn't work for this type of project. So this particular project that I've done, I have chosen to use some higher quality items. You can do this with lesser quality items, and I'll point that out, uh, save you some time. This thing cost me about $20. These bars cost about $250 a piece, $275 a piece. Uh, I have five. And then the uh, other pieces cost about 75 cents each, the washers and the bolts, about 75 cents, sorry, not 75, 35 cents for the, the bolts and about 20 cents, 19 cents for the washer. I got 20 of each. So, um, you know, just rough math, we're talking about 30, 35 bucks. But again, why would I want something like this? This saves me time because I can pour, pull this off, put it on my drying rack. I have a table that has drying racks underneath and then put my next one on and do another pour. I don't have to clean up what's underneath. I can just let it fall into here. When it dries, because this is nice uh, plastic, I can just peel it off, throw it in the garbage, start again. And I can do that over and over. If I decide to, I can just leave my painting here and let it dry right here. I don't have to do anything. I can just leave it go. So that allows me to do way more painting, which for me is awesome. I uh, love to paint and I wanna be able to paint more often. So one of the other reasons I did it like this is because I want to be able to paint small things. So this is a four inch, um, four inch tile. I'm going to be able to print that. And, you know, maybe I want to print two or three of these. I can stagger them and paint um, different amounts of things. So the number of items that you have depends on how small you want it to be. Um, and I could have done this all the way across to paint all the way across. I'm going to see how this works with just five and I'll move on from there. So what you need, you need a container that's flat and level. You need a surface to work on that's level. If I have a, a surface that isn't level and I make sure these are all level, then when I put it on a level surface, 
these are no longer going to be level anymore. So I've got to make sure I have a surface that's level. In this case, this one actually had some tires uh, on the side. I actually just broke them off because I didn't want that. I wanted it to sit level straight down here. So you need something to go across. Now you could just buy uh, steel bars uh, and go straight across. That would work. You can use uh, wood dowels. I didn't like dowels because they weren't exactly straight. I don't know if you can really see that here, but along this line, it's not 100% straight, and none of the wood I could find was straight. The other problem with dowels is when this gets wet, the wood is going to move. It probably is going to take a little bit of time, but there is that chance. With a steel bar, there isn't that chance. That's why I chose this. Spent a little bit extra money for that. Um, so you got to get your container first, take your measurements, decide which direction you're going to go. I have seen people do just bars back, back and forth, you know, in a smaller one, just having two bars. That works just fine. This just worked better for me. What I did is I took, uh, these are two foot um, threaded bars that are three eighths inch wide. I chose three eighths inch because I wanted to have a nice firm base. Uh, and I didn't want them to bend any. Um, you could probably get away with a quarter inch, uh, maybe even a little more if they're steel bars, but um, I just chose a little bit more heavy weight than normal. So I got my steel bars. Um, for each of my steel bars, I actually got um, washers and then bolts and a set of four because in my case, because this is plastic and the thing is going through plastic, I wanted some support on that plastic. So I put a washer on each side and a bolt on each side. That gives me two things. One, it gives me extra support for this plastic, so it's not going to break here for me. The second thing it does is it keeps this, this, the sides of the container from wiggling back and forth. If you notice right here, I can wiggle it a lot, but right here I can't really, or it wiggles the other side, so this stays nice and level. So that's one of the reasons I chose that. You obviously need a measuring tape to be able to do some measurements. Uh, I have my drill bits just from DeWalt. Uh, you need one drill bit that's going to be this size and one drill bit that's teeny tiny to drill your pilot hole. The pilot hole is very important. It's going to keep your stuff, uh, your holes to be on center better. You need a drill. You need a level. I have a big level and I have a small level. Uh, the small level I use um, to check this direction and the big level I use to make my lines across the thing. I also used a couple of clamps to uh, clamp my level here and then I could do my, do my line across the, across the item. So the next thing you need to do, once you've decided which direction you're going to go, you have your hardware, you've got to decide how far in between you want. I went four inches. You can do it how you want. It just depends on what surface you want to put on. So grab the canvases you want to paint on, put them in, decide on a, um, a pattern. You need probably at least three, one in the center, um, two, you know, four, six, eight inches out to the side so you can put something down and you have a nice even bed. So the next step is you need two lines, one on each side that are exactly level. To do this, if you have a level table, you can measure up from the level table. Um, give yourself a mark here, a mark here, and then use your long level just to give yourself a nice level line all the way across. Level that up. Do that on both sides. In my case, I did something similar. I took my level and I put it underneath. There's a little lip here. And this lip is level, so I just took this line and drew a line all the way across on both sides. Then you want a mark in the middle. Um, so you can actually see here, I made a little mark. And then once I had my line, I made that same mark down on my line. Um, so again, once in the middle, and then four, six, eight inches on the sides, depending on how big of canvas you're going to use. Mine here are four. Took my center line and then however many I wanted outside. I did two, so four inches, four inches, four inches, four inches, same thing on both sides. Then I took the drill, I took a 
tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Uh, in my case, it was the um, 1 16th, very tiny drill bit. And I made sure I drilled the hole exactly in on my line. You can see my line here. Exactly on my line, right on the dot that I wanted, and drilled just one tiny hole. The reason why this is so important is because when you take a big thick, you know, this is a 3 8 inch uh, piece of metal, so I did the 3 8 inch drill bit, but it has this end, and if you don't cut yourself a pilot hole, that end is going to, as you, as you spin, it's just going to move around and not go straight in where you want it. So when I have a pilot hole, I can put that tip right there, right on the pilot hole, and then go straight in to, uh, to make my hole. So I made my five holes on both sides. If you just use a metal bar, obviously you just want to drill a bit the size of that metal bar so you can stick it through and just have it sit. Uh, maybe super glue the end so it doesn't move around. In my case, I had these. So I got my steel bar. I thread one of the, one of the uh, threads on it. Then I... So my, my bars are a little bit long. I'm going to cut these off later. Um, but for right now, I'm just pushing that way on. And I put that thread, I put that uh, on the wrong side, so I'm going to put it on this side. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to thread it through here. And I'm going to leave enough room on this side that I can put my hole my threaded bar back through. On this side I'm going to do the same thing. Get my bar. And then on both sides I'm going to do the other. This side, I'll do the same thing. Now, one thing I did is on one side, I measured a quarter inch of, of the bar hanging out. Then I have my bolt. Then I have my washer. My washer, my bolt goes across. And then I measured the top to make sure that it was the same, every single one. So I just went here and said, okay, I want a 19 edge to edge. So that's where I want it. And then I just tightened this bolt. up into that point, and then I tighten this outer bolt all the way down, and then this keeps a nice rigid item. So like I mentioned before, I can do a 16 by 20 canvas on this, paint it, leave it to dry, or I can put that underneath and paint another one. This probably cost, um, like I said, $40. Uh, but it's going to save me a ton of time, a ton of effort, and let me get to painting, which I know that's what all of you guys want to do. So I'll put the items that I used below. I will also link to a couple of other videos on some different types of pouring containers. I know some people have used like a strawberry box container and just put the dowels through in that as a very cheap option. Um, another did a... Um, tray that goes underneath a washing machine. So this was huge. I mean, it's like four foot by four foot. Got big, long bars to go, big, long, sturdy bars to go across. That way they could do the very large canvases also on a pouring container. But again, it's a very easy way for you guys at home to um, create something that makes pouring a whole lot easier. Last tip is I have a, uh, just a small item that I just double checked that my bars are perfectly even. If they're not perfectly even, you can either real drill the hole, maybe in a slightly different spot, or what I've done with one of these holes is I drilled it a little bit higher, put a tiny bit of, of hot glue in, 
made sure it was where I wanted it, let it dry, and then I tightened it down with my bolts. And that gave me the exact, um, the exact level that I needed for that item. So if you have any questions, please uh, put the question, your question down below and I will ho hopefully be able to get back to those comments as soon as possible. Also, if this is the type of content you're looking for, please like and subscribe this video. And all right, Pouring Nation, we will see you guys next week.